So, got four bogeys here. We're gonna, uh, Dad's just polished up the first one. I'm gonna polish up the other three, but he's gonna polish up the first one and inspect. And he's gonna... He's gonna put all new bolts in. And whatever chains are buggered, we're gonna yeah. change. We've got uh, extra bogey chains here, but uh, he's gonna put in uh, grease nipples where necessary. We'll drill and put the grease nipple in the end. This is the solid end. Yeah. So when the spring is moving, it's lubricated and you don't have to worry about water in there. Okay. Okay, I made these. Yeah. Because, uh, we'll point them. This one's wore out. Yeah. And you see the indentation there? Yeah. Well, I have to make that indentation. Okay. And then I'll drill it to half inch, and that'll be the caps for there. Then this is done. Okay. So, come over here and I'll show you how we do it. Now, what are these caps called? These are the caps off the walking beams. Okay. The, hold the grease in. I need this fella right here. That's going to make the indent. Okay. Done. Yeah. Uh, drill that out the half inch and that one's done. Okay. So that actually I was wondering how you were gonna do this, but clearly you had a plan in advance. I always have a plan. And then we're gonna show them how nice it fits. Okay, now I'm gonna drill these. Okay. And then we'll put one on. This <clears throat> this keeps the the walking bee from sliding off. Okay. It has to ride against here. So I was wondering how Dad was going to do this. Clearly, out of plan. He's got uh, these little holes on the legs of his work tables. <laughs> so you know he was thinking about that when he built the work table. So he's going to clean this up here right away. Okay, we'll install this one. If you look close there, there's an indent there. Yep. That's what it has to fit. See, first of all, you have a collar there, eh? Yep. And then this goes on after. Okay. And then you watch where the hole is. Okay. And it happens to be right there. See? Yep. Because if you don't, if you don't know where the hole, uh, the where the key is, then you're get. See that? Yep. No, it's right on. Yeah, perfect. Bring me the box of cotter pins. Yeah. And that has to go into that slot so it can't yeah. come back. Cut that one off here. And then Cut that one off there. That's there you go. done now. Okay, so and if you want to just to give you a little tighter fit. Okay. Done. Okay, so uh 
what size uh, steel do the guys need that for that? That's one eighth thick. One eighth thick. One eighth of an inch. If it's too thin, it'll wear out. Eh? Okay. Uh, so there's new bolts on wherever it has to be on the bogies. Yeah. All on. I changed a few chains because uh, they're either too small or wore out. Okay. So once we get this far advanced, that's done. We can put the tracks on. Okay. So uh, hopefully this is the last day that I was late showing up to the shop here. And uh, we've got... Uh, two bogies installed on this side. Like Dad said, he had to replace some of the chains. Uh, sanded down the bogies and Dad repainted everything. He had to reinspect all the... He actually replaced all the, the bolts as well. And he got this side done as well. And you can see that they're installed. And I'm going to try and get Dad to kind of explain what the bogies do and how they were installed. Again, sorry, I missed this when I was because I was late coming out to the shop due to other work we had in town. And uh, so I'm going to get Dad to explain that. So what size castle nut are you using on this one? Three quarter. Three quarter inch castle nut. Actually, that's outside uh, and yeah. the half inch bolts. See? Yeah. Now we're going to hell this a hole right there. Okay. like it's right there we are okay and I don't know if we're in line or not yep I think so it's right there okay so that's gonna put another cotter pin back in here the head has to fit into the groove eh of the nut? Yep. So if you guys have to replace these, don't throw out your old one first. Make sure you got that for a good trace. And, and then it's a three and a half inch, uh, uh, three and a half inch uh, uh, hole saw okay. is the right size. Eh? Yeah. And then uh, you make that that bevel inside uh, where the hammers like I showed you. Yeah. And then just tap the ends. Okay, so you've so got... How nice and dry and yeah, now you've installed four bogies. I wasn't out here when you did this. What, how much of a pain in the ass was this for you to get done by yourself? It, it is a pain in the ass, but this is my job, so... Yeah. Where it's all about. But, so can you explain, what do the bogies do for like what's the purpose of that part when the tire is bouncing over something this rod comes out of the bogey and gives you a smooth ride okay i want to show you one one more thing too is uh, uh i have a special tool here if you don't have one of these tools to go in here yeah to open that up you can't hook this up. Okay. Because it's too short. Okay. So this is a homemade one. Yeah. And you tighten this with the impact wrench. Yeah. That spreads the chain. Yeah. And then you can put the bolt in. Uh-huh. I see. Because as you can see here, that's how much tension is yeah, on it. There's quite a bit of tension there, guys. So uh, Dad has four bogies in now. All the bogies are in. And... Uh, Caps are on. Caps are on. He, uh, uh, we sanded these down. Uh, Dad checked all the chains. And everything's got grease nipples on it too? Yep. Okay. All new grease nipples. And everything's greased? Everything's greased. We'll grease all the, the tires, uh, or the rims on the tires after all the, okay. all the tires are on. So the next steps are putting on the four tires? Put the tracks on. 
the tracks on first. Yeah. Okay. Then we put the center uh, wheels in. Okay. And then we can adjust it. The new adjusters are on there. Okay. The track adjusters. Yep. yep. Dad made new ones down here. We adjust the tracks, and this is done. Okay. I got one ski to put on the front yet. Yeah. And then I'm inside on, on brakes. Okay. So can this operate with? What's the track is on? Okay. So I can drive it. We might actually have this backed out of the shop then in the next couple of days and yeah. move in another bombardier. Backward. We still have to install spring dampeners, uh, a heater, which is still coming, and spring dampeners, which are still coming. Uh, Dad's going to put the other ski back on. He's got to do the brakes. And there's a, well, obviously, the flooring in here. He's got to do all the gauges. Uh, we're kind of hoping the next two, three weeks to have all this done. But it's got to move so we can get the other machine in. And, uh, but he's really been uh, pushing hard on this. You see that little groove there? Yeah. That's right from Bombardier. See that little yeah, groove I in see the it. rod? Yeah. Well, if, if it breaks anywhere, it'll break on one of those grooves. Okay. And uh, I can't tell until it breaks, eh? Okay. But what I do is I c cut the top off. Yeah. I put a new pipe in there. Yeah. And a new rod. Yeah. And uh, half a tube of grease and weld it and it's better than new. So what you're saying is this is that's this is a, an original part? Yeah, that's a factory flaw from Bombardier. Right? Okay. This is that homemade bogey. Yeah. So this is what I was asking about. Like this was homemade. This was this is good for just the time time just for a rough spare. Okay, to get you home. But you can see what that needs to be done. So this is the the rod. If you don't have see that pipe, yeah, I replace that. Yeah, because they wear out there. And then I put in a special hard rod. Yeah, and uh, I I like a good casing, not something that's not all bent up. Yeah. Then you got a, a bogey that's going to last you for years. So now if the guys put something like this, this gets full of snow, ice, it, sand, it, rocks. Well, it packs up with ice. The spring can't close. Then you've got a problem. Okay. And the chains are wore out. Eh? Yeah. So you need new bolts and new chains. Okay. So this is just a good spare. But this came off the machine. This come off the machine. And we're giving it back to the customer, and we're giving him a, a bogey that uh, we're selling him a bogey that we sold him a good bogey. So yeah, so we'll do in case of uh, uh, emergencies, but not to be used for full time use. Bogey in, or a chain in between, because what will happen is without a bogey, one tire will rub against the second one. Okay. They'll come up and they're rubbing and then you wreck the tires. Okay. You can't visualize it. To... <coughs> what Dad's getting at is if but there's it, no bogey here, this, this is going to naturally go back. And rub against that tire. Yeah. Now you've got a brand new tire there and a half decent one in the center. One of them is going to go for a shift or wreck them both. So if one of these breaks, is it one of those, is it, is it a case of... You'll know right away? Yeah, you should hear it flopping or jam your track. Okay. But if you can put a chain in here, like if you can take the wheels off. Yeah. I want to show them how to do that. But you pull this together, mm -hmm. and put a chain from here to here and hook it, and put the wheels back on, you'll be able to go home. Okay. There we go. Dad said he's dealt with a few broken bogeys over the years, but uh, hopefully it's not happened to you guys. Pay attention, you hear that banging. Yeah. And it happens to jam in the track, it'll wreck the track, or the track will come up and smash your tunnel where you're sitting there. Okay. <laughs>